Hello my soccer universe. Well, I decided shall I talk about England, but then I said, well, we have it so nicely with the FA Cup and so on. And despite there being a big story of a team in crisis as well, um, in this video we can talk about two teams in crisis, <laughs> or maybe even three. But it's mostly about all the crazy results that happens to the big two in Spain in the Copa del Rey. I think this is a uh, reason enough to actually make this video also that uh, an almost full round of fixtures in La Liga was played. I think makes for a nice video. I'm wearing Atleti who are soaring like an eagle high above the rest of the league at the moment. And it's the other Madrid team that we will talk a lot about. Because, because another title this season is beckoning and honestly there are now talks about Zidane being on the brink of fired again. So that makes it interesting. Barcelona also struggle in Copa del Rey but at least they overcome their opponent. Uh, in uh, Spain we had a um, rather entertaining clash between Villarreal and Granada. We of course have uh, Luis Suarez salvaging Atletico Madrid and in France we definitely have to talk also a little bit about Marseille who are just on a downward spiral uh, which is, is kind of self-feeding, a self-feeding self loop in many ways. So I would say let's get started, let's start in Copa del Rey. Uh, we had the last four fixtures were played and it was all about uh, the two big teams who finally got back into uh, the business. We didn't see them much, big, oh, unless you watched the Super Cup, which I didn't. And yeah, Real Madrid had to play in Alcoy at Alcoyano. And uh, of course, play the B team because you know, third division team. Maybe give some players a rest and others uh, give them a, a chance to shine. They didn't really shine, and you know, uh, it was enough though that in the first half, um, Eda Militao gets the uh, opening goal after an assist by Marcelo. Then uh, it was rather, um, um, you know, not very convincing, but Real Madrid thought they can play this home. But Alcoyan was not to be deterred, and Solves in the 80th gives them the equalizer. And despite all tries of Real Madrid of avoiding, uh, over time, over time they go. And it gets even better. I mean, at that point then, uh, Zidane uh, reacts and brings on Asensio, he brings on Azar. Not much of a, a strengthening given his uh, form as of late. And of course, Tony Kroos, that I actually have to say is a, a boost. Um, but it, yeah, they have a little bit more control of the game, but still not too much punch. And then uh, uh, Lopez for Alcoyano is sent off for a second ye yellow card within seven minutes. So they go a man down and you think now Real Madrid is going to do it. And then they have a free kick and that free kick goes wrong in all possible ways. From the free kick, a counter-attack is launched. Uh, it's not even a fast counter-attack. Uh, there's enough time to regroup and so on, but Nova is really tackling. And in the end, uh, Diakite plays the ball to Casanova, who puts it into the net. With ten man, one man down, 10 men only, against Real Madrid in overtime. 115th minute, Alcoyana goes through. Uh, absolutely a disgraceful result for a great team like Real Madrid. Absolutely uh, shameful and as I said, it is highly likely that it will be another title last season. Yes, they won the title last season, but before that they have been going for a while without uh, winning anything, uh, you know, since Ronaldo left. So, mm, I will, uh, the top brass will not be happy at Real Madrid, let's put it that way. Uh, because at least the Copa del Rey would have given a sort of easy way out. Uh, on the other side, it wouldn't be Real Madrid if I wouldn't say, yeah, maybe this is exactly, they are far behind in the league, uh, they are out of the core Copa del Rey, so they will put everything in, in, into the Champions League where they have potentially a makeable draw with Atalanta at home. We shall see. Um, Real Sociedad Athletic Club did their homework and got past uh, Cordoba and Ibiza. Uh, and then Cornea, who had already ousted Atletico Madrid, uh, that's a thing that I forgot to mention, and did not play in the Espanyol Stadium, no, they played their own stadium on an artificial turf um, that has one stand and the rest is all fences around. I mean, 
And then there are some lines on the field for some other sport. Uh, I assume hockey. I don't know. It was uh, it was a weird sight to see Barcelona on such a pitch. This is the absolute opposite of what you were. And, and, and I know that on the zone, that the thumbnail showed Messi, of course, was not playing because he is banned. On, uh, with a green field behind, you know, come now, whatever. No, this was totally down, 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 down. Uh, the only thing that was good for Barcelona is 10, uh, 10 kilometers from the home stadium. So, you know, it was more or less, it could have been a home game if there was a crowd, but uh, Cornea played fully as the, gave them a good fight. And Barcelona almost tripped over themselves. They got two penalties. I mean, leg luster showing left and right. Sometimes a little bit unlucky. And Cornea uh, honestly could have probably even gotten a goal here or there as well. But it's all about the two penalties that Pjanic uh, in the 39th is saved by the goalkeeper. Who, uh, that's nothing. A small goal goalkeeper with a mask like uh, Petr Cech. Clearly, you think he's out of his source, but he played a great game. And yeah, I think he will probably go to another team relatively soon. So this was in the 39th minute, in the 80th. And that was maybe a little bit more of a contentious penalty. But you know, I think both penalties were all right. Uh, Musa Dembele steps up. <laughs> I mean, this is such a ludicrous penalty. With full force down the middle, and the goalkeeper just needs to pull his knee out and to save it. I mean, unbelievable. However, I think uh, Kumo found the right words uh, is the, um, when uh, the break of, uh, before overtime was. And right off the kickoff, you could see how angry Barcelona were. And, uh, Ousmane Dembele, no, 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 Ousmane Dembele. Uh, gets the goal in 90 seconds from that moment on. Uh, that was not really way back uh, they get them a little bit uh, then uh, SDS is um, sent off for a second yellow and then uh, Braithwaite in stoppage time of overtime gets the second goal but a really close call for Barca a really 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 close call uh, as for the La Liga action um, I want to point the Valladolid against LG game was really interesting because uh, they were uh, Elche actually played it quite nice in the first half and took a uh, fully deserved 2 0 lead through Josan. However, uh, in the second half, Valladolid did come back. I mean, first of all, there was a goal this disallowed because Sean Weissman, who just played still in Austria, um, handled the ball. Uh, but then Michel in the 71st, like 10, 10 minutes after that, gets uh, a goal. And then just before the end of the, uh, of the game, uh, Fernandez gets the equalizer and that was, it was vital for Valladolid to kind of get these points against an Elche team because otherwise they would have been in trouble. Alaves against Sevilla ends uh, with Sevilla winning 2-1. Uh, it was a great start with Enesiri scoring in the third and Mendez gets the equalizer in the 30th. Suso with a wonderful shot makes it 2-1 uh, and Sevilla ca uh, hangs on to that result. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Betis um, Celta Vigo was maybe not the uh, storm bar, uh, barnstormer storm bar, that I made it out in, at the beginning, but Santi Mina gave Celta Vigo the lead. They had a, a big chance before that, but then uh, slowly Betis took, took over and Fakir and, uh, and Canales in both cases, uh, Fakir assists, Canales scores just before they have turned the game, game around. And, you know, without Iago Aspas, Celta Vigo lacks some punch up front. They had a chance here or there, but I think Betis got a uh, deserved win. Overall, uh, Via Real Granada was a crazy game as well. Um, Rob uh, Roberto Soldado, who played at Via Real, gives uh, the lead uh, for Granada in the 21st out of nowhere. But that was actually good because that kicked the game into the next gear. Uh, and Peña in the 29th finds the equalizer with a similar shot from a very acute angle uh, to make it 1 1 at the half. Then I have to say this was a rather softish pen penalty, but Gomez converts it for Villarreal to make it 2-1. But Kennedy, another great shot, equalizes in the 75th. And then in the stop, uh, you know, the 90th minute stoppage time, uh, another penalty is given via VAR. Uh, another one, rather contentious in a way. Uh, yes, can't 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 go there, but nah. Rice is sent off uh, and Paco Alcázar uh, steps on. 
and he shoots it hard, but oh, but you know, off the ground, the goal, goalkeeper can save it, and it ends 2-2. We definitely had a points drop for Villarreal, and then there was even a flare-up at the end between the coaches. Rather interesting. Uh, Valencia and Osasuna 1-1, and then Eibar Atletico Madrid. Uh, Eibar took the lead through a penalty uh, that the goalkeeper converted. His first ever goal, so that was already in, in, in interesting. And Athletic Madrid had a hard time getting in there. I mean, Eibar really kept it tight, and Athletic Madrid was not really inspiring. However, if you give them a chance, they will uh, take care of it. I mean, they had a good chance um, through Correa, who where the ball just kissed the uh, top of the bar. But then uh, an Eibar player wants to play out, the ball is intercepted by Llorente. I mean, he shot right at Llorente, who was there, who both then run to, uh, who runs with Suarez to his goal, but Suarez says, I take it, makes it 1-1 before the half. And then it was not, I mean, I was switching back and forth between Barcelona, then there was a Lazio game and the Atletico game, but was not convincing. Just maybe in the last few minutes, Atletico tried a little bit more um, and then Suarez runs into the box uh, very, very, very late and he's brought down again, a little bit of a contact there, so probably all right. And with uh, Panenka, he scores the winning goal and gives Atletico an all-important win. Uh, which means now uh, we have Atletico Madrid all on top of the standings. Uh, seven points clear with a game in hand. It will be prob prob probably more uh, once this is evened out. And, you know, 73% uh, chance ahead of Real Madrid who is giving 12 and then Barcelona 14. I think it looks pretty, pretty good for Atletico Madrid at this moment. Uh, we have Sevilla now overtaking Real Sociedad and uh, probably Sevilla uh, with another win. Could uh, at least go into fourth place, which is what we will, would expect. A few movements down. Um, again, it's still a little bit uneven. Uh, look at Elche and Atletico Madrid having only 17 games, where others have already 19. So it would be the halfway point, but it's not really. So here we really need to adjust and we see actually Sevilla would be in fourth uh, place. We also see that Barcelona uh, is definitely un uh, underperforming, Atletico Madrid overperforming. Uh, Real Madrid surprisingly rather. Uh, they are, I mean, projected and expected are uh, large, largely agreeing with each other. Elche is doing really, 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 really well down there. So that's a big uh, green, green ball, though you're way down, but Elche has a really poor rating. Um, so yeah, let's look also at the expected standings where, you know, uh, not much has changed. Vigo goes now behind Real, uh, Betis and Getafe, Levante and Cadiz are exchanging, but it's pretty much, you can see also very clear tendencies, Atletico Madrid is going to be champions, uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid will make second spot, uh, then Sevilla, Villarreal and uh, Real Sociedad will fall 4, 5, 6 potentially with, you know, Villarreal and Sevilla probably for the last championship spot and then as a huge cut. For probably the last Europa League spot, uh, given how the Copa del Rey goes, uh, that because that winner gets a Europa League spot and uh, there are a few teams still in contention. But if one of the top six will get it, then there's a seventh spot available. Uh, broad midfield that could go for the seventh spot. And then starting with Valencia, we're talking relegation battle. But two spots are reserved for Elche and Huesca somehow. Uh, we have the next round, which already starts tonight with Levante and Valladolid. Um, Atleti plays against Valencia. It's a big matchup. Barcelona at Elche and Real Madrid at Al Al Alaves. I mean, all eyes will be there. Uh, slipper game for me is Real Sociedad against uh, Betis. Absolutely, I think that could be an interesting one. We also have to talk about France, where Marseille lost at home to Lens in an absolutely horrible performance once again. Uh, Banzai in the 59th gets the goal. Must say, very late on tries a little bit, but it's not enough. They just cannot get uh, any any points. And you know, uh, the moment I said Marseille is actually when you take into account uh, adjust Marseille's top for that moment on Marseille has been on a roll downward. And I have I have to say it, uh, the coach is not helping with the way he is talking about his team. So uh, if we look at the table after, after this game, we have Lens now really moving up in the standings. Uh, where Marseille um, 
yeah, right behind Marseille now, and Marseille is not low, looking good. Even if we're just Marseille will stay there, but I, I think they have lost touch, and they're still outperforming their expected uh, um, points. Uh, as for 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 expected standings, we see uh, Laos and Algeria switch uh, um, switch spots, and Laos is actually on a good way of being a promoted team and performing quite 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 well. Uh, in Portugal, I oh, know. I always want to say Portugal. We have uh, our full round. Monaco Marseille is a big name ma ma matchup as is Saint Etienne. Uh, uh, Lyon and Rennes against Lille. Those are three games, and I even think PSG against Montpellier is a good one. We talked about it on the weekend, but I think it's a really interesting round in league. Uh, now Portugal, um, we have the Portuguese Cup. I this was played last week, but I just thought I'll put the results up there. Most notably, Sporting is out. Maritimo eliminated them. Uh, Porto needed overtime against Nacional. Benfica against Estrela de Amadora had less problems, and Braga similarly. Uh, quarterfinals will be played uh, next week. I'll, I'll show you this in the review vi video of the weekend. But we also had a league Guimarães beating Nacional 3-1, which means the Nacional loses a spot in a in, in, in table. Um, and just here we go directly to the expected standings now because not, not much has changed there either. It's still Porto Benfica Sporting looks like a three-way race with Porto being the favorite. And we have, a, I said it already, a weird Sunday, Monday round where Benfica against Nacional, uh, Porto against Farense, easy win, and Sporting against Boavista. I mean, all three top teams play against teams that are down there. So, yeah, interesting stuff happening uh, in Western Europe. Um, as I said, Madrid and Marseille, probably two teams where the crisis birds are going. I think more for Marseille than Madrid. Uh, let me know what you thought about the happenings here. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I uh, will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.